So our last speaker who is on the screen now, our lovely Jen. Hello, Jen. You OK? Yes, can you hear yeah, us? Right? Oh, good. Just do a little sound check there to make sure we can hear you. So yes, so Jen Southern then is a senior lecturer and practicing artist based in uh, Lancaster's Institute for Contemporary Arts and whose work is widely informed by mobility theory in its most pressing debates on climate emergency. Jen has been an associate director for the center for well over a decade, and indeed John Uri used to refer her to her as our artistic director, which is a beautiful <laughs> term of endearment. Uh, Art Mobilities is another of the mobility subfields, and um, it's grown exponentially in recent years. Jen then has played a leading role in bringing about both through the founding of Art Mobilities Network in 2018 and numerous uh, influential publications, including a recent article in the Mobility Journal entitled An Agenda for Creative Practice in the New Mobilities Paradigm. And I did come to that talk, Jen. It was a very fascinating talk, by the way, when, when you uh, introduced that to, to uh, the uh, Mobilities community. So once again, without further ado, uh, I'll hand you over to Jen Southern. I'm just going to take a minute to to make sure that I can share my slides. So bear with me. Hopefully Teams hasn't. Actually. Um, yeah, we can see them. And can I just check that you can see my slides and not my notes? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Fantastic. So, um, so let me just move my. Great. So yes, um, I'm really sorry that I can't be there with you today. Um, it's it, and to sort of be there in the atmosphere in the room and to see everybody. Um, I know the atmosphere at the at Seymour events is always fantastic. So so apologies for that. But thank you for including me as a virtual contributor, and uh, to Lynn for for organising everything. Uh, I have to say it is one of the only things that would get me up at 5.30 on a Monday morning um, so that I don't miss hearing everybody else's talks. So I'm going to talk about art and mobilities research in Seymour's past, present and future and how it formed through the collective and collaborative work of many people. Um, I came to Lancaster in 2008 to do my PhD. Um, obviously five, five years um, after the centre began. And I'd, um, I came to Mobilities um, partly through my own practice. And I'd heard John speaking um, about his research in Salford, I think, um, about um, and, and the way that he described there being as many people in, in flight above. Oh, above Edinburgh. Uh, people. Yeah. That kind of description really caught my imagination and um, and I really wanted to come to, to come to Lancaster to, to work in Seymour um, and I presented my art practice at a conference, at a conference and John Ory um, that John Ory had been chairing and afterwards he suggested that what I was doing with walking and and, uh, and tracking people could be used as a mobile research method and inspired by that encouragement I applied to do my PhD at Lancaster in Seymour um, with Monica as my supervisor and using my art practice as a method. And I can't thank Monica enough for being such a fantastic and inspiring supervisor and for then inviting me to be an associate director of Seymour when I started my role um, at the um, in Leica. And that really um, Monica's influence, John's influence and Seymour has been really instrumental in my academic career and has really kind of guided what I've um, what I've done um, in the last 10 years. And also I want to, to well, while I'm here, <laughs> I want to say a huge thanks to Penny as well for all of her support throughout those years. Sorry, I'm having slight trouble changing slides, so hopefully that's going to work. Um, yeah, so over the last 20 years, um, Seymour has welcomed and supported artists and creative approaches uh, and, it's, and creative practice has been present um, in a whole range of conferences, journal articles and reviews, for instance, the longstanding work in transfers journal, uh, research exhibitions, books and other arts organisations um, that have sprung up since then, such as the Walking Artists Network, the Running, Running Artfully Network that was founded by Kai Singh Tan, who's now at the University of Southampton, 
and the Arts Territory Exchange, founded by Gudrun Philipska, who has um, who came subsequently came to Lancaster to do her PhD. And I want to kind of mention a few people to sort of bring them into the room with us because. Um, I don't think any any area of, of mobility's research um, could exist without um, all of the people that contribute to it. So the Seymour Fellowship Programme that others have mentioned already um, has over the last 10 years attracted many artists who wanted to work with us here at Lancaster and who were formative in shaping the area, including Tricia Flanagan, who worked with wearable computing, Owen Chapman, who works with mobile sound, Kai Sing Tan, who works with running and, and art, and postdoctoral um, research um, with Sam Tulin coming to us from, from Canada, and then Stephanie Sodero as well. And they were both here for much longer and had a much bigger impact in how we think about, about um, creativity and mobilities research. And now we've got current PhDs such as Gudrun Philipska and recently graduated from the PhD here at Lancaster and um, people like Hunter Brugman, who've both made really and are making really big contrib contributions. And of course, there's other activity at Lancaster that can be included in this area. People like Bron Szynski's work with Sasha Engelman and the artist Thomas Saraceno thinking about um, non-motorised or non-solar-powered non, um, flight. Um, and recently seeing one of our ex-colleagues work, uh, Cosmin Popan's work, recent publication of really incredible visualisations and graphic novel kind of, of work about his research with gig work and food deliveries. And of course, there's been fantastic support for this area from Lynn Pierce um, and Mo Mobilities and Humanities. And so this work has been presented at many conferences over the years. And this is just really a list of the ones that I remember, um, and I'm sure there are many more. Um, and one of the first things I did when I when I um, got my job at, at the uh, at Leica, in fact, I think it was literally the first week I was in that role, I was um, presenting the an exhibition of, of Mobilities artists at that conference in 2013. Um, and I think a particular note here as well is the Differential Mobilities Conference at Concordia University that brought together the research um, and um, development of both Kim, Kim Sorchuk and Owen Chapman, who ran the mobile media lab there and made creative practice really central to this conference with many exhibitions and performances. And also the work of Mimi Shala, who has over a long period of time supported and written about art and creative practice in mobilities and curated important exhibitions like the LA Replay exhibition at the College Arts Association conference in 2012 and a special issue that followed it. And so you can see here sort of a, there's a, um, a, a really international focus right, right from the beginning in, in um, creative practice as part of mobilities. So coming a little bit more up to date, in 2021, Kai Barry and I brought together 26 artists and researchers for a virtual exhibition as part of the Immobile Lives and Turbulent Times conference organised by the brilliant Sharon Wilson um, and held virtually at Northumbria University. And Kai and I felt that the collective of artists and researchers in this exhibition had some really valuable ideas to share on how we do mobilities research. So Kai and I decided to write a paper that reflected on how and why artistic and creative expression continues to be an important part of mobilities research and events. And the resulting article has been co-authored with the artists listed here. We wanted to bring together previous research into one place to document some of what's happened over the last 20 years so that it could be referred to in the future and, and be access, accessible. We invited all the artists who've been part of the exhibition um, to, to write sections um, about their work so that it both gives an overview of the contribution that art and creative practices made to mobilities, but it also demonstrates that, um, that contribution through specific examples of artworks. And the five features of art practice, um, art and creative practice that we, we highlighted in this paper, contributions that we suggest are brought, include um, methods for researching the sensory, um, long-standing methods of co-production and participation um, that have been within contemporary uh, fine art practice um, for nearly, uh, almost nearly a century now, um, approaches to visualising and making things public, um, a long-standing engagement with environmental issues and landscape, and finally, a deep practical understanding of materiality. Um, and I was recently talking to Karen Kaplan about this, and she was she was mentioning her work um, 
with artists and how they might bring more ways of understanding the kind of material conditions and the materiality of particular technologies that, that she's, she's um, working on at the moment. And we concluded um, this paper by that um, we concluded in this paper that creative research not only contributes to the development of mobile methods and communication of research, but as a performative, practical, and material mode of research, also provides a new mobile onto epistemology in which the practical creative engagement with mobility is where no knowledge is generated. And one thing that we hinted at in the paper but didn't have space to go into is the range of ways that over the last 100 years artists have addressed themes about mobilities in their work. And this is really just a kind of snapshot of images of the kind of some of the kinds of work that's that's gone on. And this area is really still ripe for research and development um, alongside studies of the many contemporary artists and arts festivals and exhibitions that address similar themes. Um, including, um, I think about 10 years ago, the Walk On exhibition uh, and the research of Cynthia Morrison Bell, Alistair Robinson and Mike Collier um, over in the North East. So now I'm going to move on to a little bit more about my recent work. Um, and this exhibition at Quarry Bank Mill in Cheshire, a museum of the cotton industry that was commissioned by Future Everything, in which I used the mobilities of water as a thread to pull together some of the ways in which the Industrial Revolution resulted in our current climate emergency. And through that focus, through a focus on mobility, I looked at five different landscape features, rocks, rivers, trees, meadow and moss. And using machine learning, I brought these com quite complex ideas together to reach over um, 123,000 visitors and engage them with our issues to do with climate emergency. And the image here in the top left is from a video I made with machine learning software trained on images of 18th century textile samples from an archive and images of the river at, at Quarry Bank that powered the production of those textiles. And on the right next to it is an image using the same process, but with textiles worn by exhibition visitors who could photograph them in, in the show. And it invited them to reflect on the process involved in producing contemporary clothing and to understand, understand a bit and as well to understand a bit more about machine learning and the systems and technologies that we are increasingly inextricably entangled with. Underneath are stills from videos that combine production manuals and wage ledgers from from the museum with meadows and moss growing and rocks that bear evidence of climate that they were formed in um, combined with maps of the local area. And the aim of the exhibition was to bring together these complex temporal environmental pro and environmental processes in a way that could be encountered quite simply in the exhibition. And finally, I want to introduce my current work with the Rocky Climates Network, an experimental practice based research network developed with Sarah Casey and Rebecca Birch that brings together artists and researchers who are concerned with the mobilities and inst instabilities of landscapes in uncertain times. And in this work, we focus on geology to engage uh, audiences with, with different ideas about environmental emergency. And Sarah's work is particular to do, particularly to do with the melting of glaciers. And Rebecca's work is often to do with, the, with, with mining and, um, and extraction. Um, and in this work, one artist goes to a specific location and hosts a conversation with the rocks via Zoom for an audience that's online. And using creative methods, they bring the materiality of that location into conversation with other people at a distance. So a quick example from an early version uh, is where I use the mobile phone signal to sort of feel the density of the rock in a cave. As I moved in and out, the signal was lost and gained and, um, and the image kind of broke up and abstracted for the remote audience and allowed us to talk much more about a sense of rockiness, a sense of instability, um, as well as what we think of a, as kind of the stability of bedrock. And so during this, um, so this this was done from Rydal Cave above Rydal Water in Cumbria and was made, the, the cave that was made by mining for slate to make roof tiles. During the conversation, I introduced other ideas about of rockiness um, through reading excerpts from public accounts of mountain rescue events in this area. And by reading from N.K. Jemison's um, science fiction work, The Fifth Season, in which certain central characters can feel into rock and can control it, and through which she explores the way in which geology and mining is inextric inextricably connected to colonialism and slavery. The second public event happened at Whitley Bay, in which seven artists explored rocky landscapes for audiences at the site and on Zoom at the same time. 
And here in my work for this site, I focused on limpets as an organism that could perhaps help us to interpret um, between ourselves and rocks in these conversations with rocks, because they're so sort of closely um, smushed up against the rock, in contact with the rock throughout their lives. And so using things found on the rocky shore, I described how shells and sand had formed from some of the rocks around us, um, how limpets made a home scar on the rock, an indent that they return to as the tide goes out and that fits their shell perfect to make a perfect seal that they are adapted to withstand continual ebb and flow of the tide, heat and increasing temperatures. They not only sculpt the rock in this way, making a home scar, but they're also bioengineers that preserve biodiversity. When the tide covers them, they roam around eating algae. And in experiments where no limpets were present, algae takes over and smothers other life forms. Ecologists have even created a thing that they call a robo limpet, an old limpet shell with technology inside that records temperatures to work out how adaptable they are to increasing temperature, to, to temperature increase. And by using Mobility's lens here, it's helped me to make these kinds of connections um, between what's happening on the rocky shore, thinking about how we can think about that in terms of long time frames, right back to when, when different kinds of shells uh, and, and sea creatures were fossilized and thinking forward to think about climate emergency and um, temperature change and how these kinds of organisms might survive. Um, and this focus on more than human mobilities is now a central focus of my research and art practice. And we've curated an exhibition of 14 artists and nine, nine live Zoom events for the T2M Mobilities Ethics and Aesthetics Conference in Seoul, Seoul this October. It'll all be on Zoom with a panel discussion uh, a panel and a panel discussion alongside it. And for me, this marks a shift in my approach to produce more focused contributions on artist practice and related to climate emergency. So I hope you can join us for that. And so the future of this area, I think there's two, two strands to it. One is to make mobilities research more, uh, more evident uh, to the contemporary art world so that it can have an Im impact as a tool to support their work that addresses climate emergency. Uh, for what much wider publics and to make the work of mobilities research more evident in that field, but also to continue to, to develop the impact of um, art practice in a really focused way within mobilities research. So thank you everyone and thank you to Seymour for all of the uh, great things that, that have, have uh, and contributions that they've made, it's made to my work over, over the last decade and I hope in the future.